Hello everyone, welcome back to the Crux OCM video blog. I've been attending a lot of conferences lately and a big thing and a big topic on the energy transition is hydrogen and hydrogen as an alternative fuel source to natural gas or liquid natural gas. So I absolutely believe it can be a fantastic in certain applications. The application I want us to dig into today is replacing natural gas in our homes. So our existing transmission and distribution systems that move natural gas into our furnace in our house or our stove in our house. What if we could replace that natural gas with hydrogen? So I'm gonna go through uh, three points on hydrogen and, and methane, which is the majority of natural gas, and compare and contrast the differences. So number one that we'll go through is the size of the molecule. So the hydrogen molecule is much smaller than a methane molecule. So hydrogen H2 is about two grams per mole in terms of its density, its mass. So your methane though, your CH4, is 16 grams per mole. So on, on the size of it, so if you think the diameter, so around the shape of, the shape of a round it is, how big a round it is, um, your hydrogen is 120 picometers, whereas your methane is 200 picometers. So in terms of the size of the molecule, if you were to assume it was a ball, your hydrogen is actually 40% smaller of a molecule than, than your methane. And we'll get back to why that's important in our existing uh, natural gas transmission systems and distribution systems, but hint, it has to do with methane fugitive emissions, another big topic in the energy industry. So number two is the explosive limits. So gases that are not just air, uh, they have a lower and an upper explosive limit, and that defines the range at which the percentage of gas that's mixed with air when there's a spark can create an explosion. So very, very scary, something we want to be aware of, something that is not acceptable at all, especially in our homes. So the explosive range, the lower and upper limit of hydrogen is four to 75% when mixed with air. So that's a significant range, right? So you, you know, you can get just a little bit of hydrogen in the air and it could explode. You can get a lot of hydrogen in the air and it can still explode. Whereas with natural gas, it's actually a little different. It's between 4% and 15.5%. So it's a smaller range. So once you get so much natural gas into the air, it actually can't explode. Um, however, then there's other potential issues with um, not enough oxygen in the, air, in the air for humans. There's definitely other safety issues, but a difference in terms of how explosive these, these different gases are. So if you think hydrogen, you know, if we look into the past, the Hindenburg blimp, right? Very unfortunate, but that's hydrogen. That's what happens in gas form. Uh, the big reason why folks are so interested in hydrogen as an alternative energy to natural gas is when you burn hydrogen, you do not get CO2 emissions. So CO2 emissions is the leading cause of global warming. That's the, the you know, our, our greenhouse gases. That's what's a really big problem for us as a society. So switching to hydrogen sounds so appealing and like it could be such a silver bullet because once burned, it doesn't create any CO2, whereas of course your methane does. So on number three, another thing that at first will make hydrogen seem like a fantastic silver bullet for our, our current energy ecosystem globally is that the energy density by mass of hydrogen is significantly higher than that of methane. Now mass means it's a solid, right? So your hydrogen energy density is 141.8 megajoules per kilogram whereas your methane is only 50 to 55 megajoules per kilogram. So at first you're like, oh, fantastic, you know, this, this you know, fuel will, will completely change the world. However, if you're thinking about getting that fuel into your home through our existing infrastructure to heat your house and boil your water, we have to transport it in gas. So in a gas phase, the energy density of your hydrogen is actually 0.01 megajoules per liter, whereas in natural gas, the energy density is 38,000 megajoules per liter. So significantly different. So, so now that we understand the differences between hydrogen and methane or natural gas, let's talk about why that's impactful in our existing transmission and distribution systems for our homes. So we're gonna do a little thought exercise. So let's imagine that we put on 100% hydrogen through our existing transmission and distribution systems. So we're going through that and we're putting in 100% hydrogen. 
Now we know we have methane emissions problems and that also contributes to greenhouse gases. So as reported by the American Gas Association, our existing infrastructure leaks at a rate of about 22%, or sorry, 0.22%, right? So that's, that's not nothing, um, and it's something we need to be mindful of. Keep in mind now that hydrogen is 40% smaller. So I'm not sure exactly what that translates into, but it means that you're going to have more hydrogen escaping faster, which means you're gonna to have to put more hydrogen into these existing systems to be able to heat your homes and boil your water. On top of that, if we add the energy density of the fuel and the energy density of hydrogen in its gas form being so much lower than natural gas, we also then need to push even more hydrogen to be able to heat our homes and boil our water. So, so again, let's imagine that it's 100% hydrogen pumping into our homes and we know that it's so tiny that it squeezes through every nook and cranny. Then let's talk about the lower and the upper explosive limits. So, so the lower and the upper explosive limits and you're, you're somehow seeping into your house. With natural gas, you know, all of your fittings and your valves and your furnace and your stove, they're very well um, catered towards natural gas. They're, they're designed for it. And if you do happen to get a natural gas leak in your home, you'll smell it. It'll have that rotten egg smell for safety reasons, which is so important. So assuming we even do get all that in place with, with hydrogen, and hydrogen starts filling up your home, the explosive range is so large. So you have this large explosive range, and then if there's any sort of spark, your home becomes the Hindenburg, which is absolutely not gonna happen. Like that, we can't have that, right? So, so while hydrogen can seem so interesting as, a, as an alternative fuel source for our day-to-day -day use, it really may not work. You know, the, the more reliable or the more smart uh, alternative fuel source like likely still is electrification. So now we know that it really doesn't make logical sense for us to boot 100% hydrogen through our systems and that something like electrification makes a lot more sense. So what about though, since you know we still use natural gas for our home heating and our stoves and we have these appliances, what about something like blending natural gas into, into our, or blending hydrogen into our natural gas systems such that we can you know, have some of that benefit of that lower, uh, that zero carbon emissions. So that may make sense in theory, and it has been proven that it's safe to put 10 to 15% uh, hydrogen into natural gas systems very safely. But if we go back to those other problems, especially the, the differences in the molecule size, the probability that that 10% at the top end actually makes it to your stove to boil water, combined with the, the lower energy density and gas form, you're really not actually accomplishing anything by putting that, that hydrogen into the system. So if you're not accomplishing anything, then really it's almost just like a, an emotional security blanket of making folks feel good that they're, that they're adding this, uh, this additive into natural gas and that they can calculate that they've actually lowered the carbon emissions, but in actual fact, they haven't. And, and that's not okay because you're, you're investing in that equipment to put that hydrogen in. Uh, and that hydrogen has to come from somewhere and maybe it, it's generating carbon dioxide somewhere else in the value chain to create that carbon, especially if it's uh, blue or gray hydrogen. We'll get into that another time. So, so the complexities of hydrogen, uh, and I know that it's, it's a very hot topic in, in many, uh, many conferences right now. And so yes, it, it is going to have some fantastic applications in many parts of the energy value chain. Uh, however, when it comes to our existing natural gas transmission and distribution systems, I'm really not seeing it right now. But what I am seeing is other ways that we can use our existing distribution and transmission systems as efficiently as possible so that we can increase the utilization of our oil and gas for now until we do get to 100% electric electrification and renewables. So that's you know, what we do here at Crux, um, you know, automating control rooms to increase the efficiency and safety for control room operators and increase the utilization of our existing assets. And let's not forget, of course, that efficiency is green. Okay, so that was a lot of mouthful of lots of numbers and lots of facts and feel free to crack open your old high school chemistry textbook if you wanna check the numbers. Uh, if folks are interested, please comment below. would love to have a discussion on this. I don't think it's widely talked about enough. Um, and then if you like our content, uh, please like and subscribe, of course. Thank you all.